All right, so I have finally made the land nav video and how to do land nav and basic training. It's probably going to be a while. I haven't edited it together yet, but it's going to be a while. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the times for the different topics that I'm going to talk about. So if you only want to focus on one specific area of land nav, then you can actually just skip forward to that actual point. Honestly, I hope I explained this well enough for you guys. I did my very best to actually lay things out for you guys, you know, point blank, simple for you. If, you, if you're struggling with land nav, you, do, if you don't really know what to do, um, and, you're, and you've done the future soldier training, and you're a little bit lost on that, hopefully this video can help you guys out. If you're actually watching this for some other reason, and you're just wanting to figure out how to do land nav like the way the military does it, then this video should, you know, basically show you guys it. So I literally walk you guys step by step with actually paying attention to the map what are the important things on the map what are some things that you should know as far as terrain features the very basics and then how to actually plot your coordinates figure out your azimuth figure out your distance and then actually go to the points in a few strategies so i talk about everything in this video and maybe it would have been a good idea to split it up but again numbers and times and stuff are down in the description below so if this video ends up being beneficial to you guys uh, I hope you hit that like button if you want to stick around for some more videos related to the army basic training AIT what it's like you know different you know military things hitting that subscribe button would be awesome but now I'm going to switch it over to me a few minutes ago whenever I was actually trying to explain this huge topic of land navigation to you guys All right, so one of the first things that we're gonna cover, and that's gonna be the things that you need to look at whenever you are focusing on your map. Now, this right here is the protractor. Basically, you have three different triangles right here, and what these are for are these grid squares that are on the map, and you will line them up, right, to see where it's, um, see where the actual point is at. But to know which triangle you're going to use, you're going to use the 150,000, uh, 1 100,000, or the 125 or 250,000. And where you're going to find that on the map is right up here. I should have another picture for you guys to look at. That is going to be the first thing that you look at when you grab your map. You're going to see what the scale is of the map so you'll know what to use because people will use the wrong triangle I don't know how it happens sometimes but people will use the wrong triangle the next most important thing for you to focus on with your map is the gm angle basically this is the angle that you're going to add or subtract to whatever your azimuth is whenever you shoot it the reason that you have this and this whole little graph over here is because this map is a flat map but we all know that the earth is not a flat earth so basically this angle is accounting for the fact that we are using a flat map on a circular uh, or a spherical earth and down here whenever you get your azimuth whether you're plotting that azimuth on the map or you're actually going to shoot it with the uh, with the compass and then transfer that over to the map. Down here, you're going to see these two little comments that will say to to convert magnetic azimuth to grid azimuth, subtract the GM angle, and then to convert a grid azimuth to a magnetic azimuth, add the GM angle. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that as of right now. But that's super, super, super extremely important that you actually do the right thing. So whether you add or subtract, you need to know which one you're actually going to do. And we will cover that later whenever we actually plot the points and, you know, figure out what our azimuths are going to mean. But for now, the GM angle right here, which is 10.3 degrees, that is what you are going to add or subtract to your angles whenever you actually do plot your points. Now real quick, something I do want to cover, which is what is the grid north, whenever you're talking about grid north, magnetic north, and true north. Those are three things that you're going to have to know whenever you're learning about land nav and stuff. And basically, the grid north is, you're looking here on the grid, north is facing forward, right? 
But if you look over here to my compass, north is actually facing a little bit to the left of here. So if you wanted to orient the map correctly, you would have to orient the map like this. Um, so this is grid north, and this is magnetic north. And then where this grid north is facing north, this little star right here, that is true north. That is where the actual north pole is. That's like actual north. So the magnetic north, what this is using, moves and it rotates, you know, as the years go by. So that's why there's three different norths. There is magnetic north, there's grid north, and then there is true north. True north, you don't really have to worry about that much. Honestly, I've never had to worry about it. The only thing you need to remember is grid north and magnetic north. Now, when you're looking at a map, there's all these different colors. There's green and there's blue. There's also red lines and there's black lines and red brown lines and all these different things, right? The only thing that y'all have to worry about as far as the colors go is obviously green is vegetation, trees, and stuff like that. The blue is going to be the water, but this is obviously water right here. The thing that you need to focus on is the creeks and the rivers, right? And then the contour lines, which is all these little lines that you see right here. Those are showing how the elevation is going to be, and that is really important. Because down here, one of the other important things on the map that you need to know is this contour interval uh, of 10 feet. Basically, that means that in between, in between each one of these lines, there's going to be a 10 foot difference, 10 feet of a different elevation, higher or lower between those two points. So you can, you know, just by figuring up here, you'll see that all these lines are a whole lot more together they're closer together which means there's gonna be a whole lot of steep elevation over here and then way over here the contour lines are not really that close together so it's a whole lot more flat land over here so something to keep in mind whenever you're actually plotting your points and stuff like that whether something's on a hill or near a steep hill or anything like that So probably one of the next most important things with land navigation is terrain features. Now, don't mind any of my kind of handwriting and stuff like this. This is my notebook from basic training. So these are the actual notes that I took whenever I was at basic training. And the thing you're gonna have to pay attention to is five major terrain features. There are three minor terrain features and there are two supplementary terrain features. Honestly, the biggest thing that I want to talk about in this video is just the hills, right? Because ridges and saddles and all this other stuff is basically based off of hills. So if you know what a hill looks like, which is basically a circle outlined by another circle, outlined by another circle, outlined by another circle. So you can see here that the, a ridge basically has three circles and that's what a ridge is so three hills next to each other a saddle is basically the area in between two hills now again i am not going to cover any of this i'm only going to talk to you guys about what you need to know to basically pass land nav so if you look over here on the actual map you can see that right here there is a circle outlined by another circle outlined by some other things this is a hilltop and you can easily identify other smaller hilltops basically right here so it's an enclosed circle and everything around it is going to be a hill so there's a hill right here there's a hill right here um and so here's a hill here's a hill here's a hill i think i just pointed out those but Basically, you get the point. So the thing that you want to identify here with the reason why I think hills are so important because they're like, they are the most important terrain feature, right? If you have a point that is on a hill or near a hill, you can see some of the points that I've had here in the past where I wrote them in pen. So if you look at this point, you can see that there is a hill to the left and it's also in between two hilltops so this is actually going to be on low ground so whenever you're walking over to this point you're going to realize hey my point is in between these two hills and you can see that there is a creek right down the middle right here so that's why water is really important uh, something a color obviously that you need to pay attention to 
and whenever you're actually going to your point you need to identify hey what are some of the terrain features that are near my point that can help me identify the point so if you are on the very top of a hilltop maybe over here maybe you realize hey you know i'm too far to the left you need to go right or something like that um, so that's a key point so hills are very 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 important everything else all the other terrain features are going to be basically self-explanatory and you will learn those as you go but for now in this video i want to stress to you guys that hills are really important they're basically a circle outlined by another circle outlined by another circle these other terrain features you have the uh obviously hill valley ridge saddle depression those are the five major terrain features then you have the three minor terrain features which are a draw and a spur and a cliff and then you have the supplementary terrain features which are a cut and a fill. These are basically man-made terrain features. Again, not gonna cover any of these in depth because this video would go on for way too long. Just remember a hill and whenever you're looking for your point, it, you know, if your point is near a hill, if it's on top of a hill, that can help you identify if you're going in the right direction or you're near the point. All right, so now that you know some of the basics of a map, you know, what to look for on the map, and then kind of how to identify where your point is at, you know, whether or not it's near a hill, now we need to cover actually plotting our points, which is arguably the most important thing about land nav. There's a lot of important things that could get you screwed up, but if you plot the wrong point, then you're just gonna be totally and completely lost. So how do you want to identify which grid area you're going to be in so which block are you going to be in that is the first thing that you need to figure out whenever you are plotting the point now the rule of thumb for this is right up and i'm about to explain that in just a minute here after i draw a little you know fake grid all right so i just drew this little crappy grid right here and i have a four digit grid coordinate which will get you within 1000 meters of your point okay so the reason i'm only doing a four digit grid coordinate is because you only need four digits to actually get you get you into the right grid square so if this is a four digit grid coordinate we have this grid right here where the latitude and longitude are indicated by the 84 83 82 81 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and so on and basically Anytime you have a point, what you want to do is just draw a line down the middle and this is where right up comes into play. So you want to go right and then you want to go up, okay? So the right here is going to be indicated by the first part of the grid coordinate. Up is going to be indicated by the second part. So 0, 2 is going to be, look, we're going to be looking at this line right here, 0, 2. So this line right here. Then 82 is going to be right here. This line right here. So the right up comes into play. If you start right here, you want to move to the right until you hit 02. You're going to be on this line then. Now you're going to go up and you're going to go up until you hit this line 82. And so this point right here is going to indicate your grid square. Because where those two lines intersect, you are going to be looking at the upper right quadrant of that point. And then this is the actual grid square that your point is going to be in. And that is identified by this right here. So in just a minute, whenever we have to plot an eight digit grid coordinate like this one right here, what you're going to do is draw a line right down the middle, okay? On the left side, this is going to be your right. So this is going to indicate which grid and how far to the right you are going to go. This one right here is going to indicate up, okay? So this is going to indicate how far you're going to go up whenever you plot your point. Once you do that, once you get this, this decided, you want to ignore the last two digits of each of these numbers, okay? So 0, 2, 4, 5 ignore four five eight two eight nine ignore eight nine because the first thing that you want to figure out is what grid square am i in and so i did obviously the same grid square here and what i always do is underline these two numbers the first two numbers 
are gonna indicate what grid square you are in, okay? First two numbers, I do this every single time. I will draw a line down the center. I will underline the first two numbers of each of these two latitude and longitudes. And whenever I do that, I'm gonna figure out, okay, zero two, eight two. And then I'm gonna figure out I am in this grid square. Once you figure that out, then you can actually look at four, five, eight, nine, and you can use your protractor to figure that out. All right, so what I've done here for you guys is kind of shown you how it's going to be whenever you actually get your points for your map, whenever you do land nav. What they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a starting point and then they're gonna give you a list of other points you have to get. For me, in this video, we are only going to do two points because if you can do those two points, then you can do 20 points if you want to, but in most cases, you're probably only gonna get somewhere around five to eight points whenever you actually do land nav, but again, in this case, we're only going to do two. So again, the first thing that you wanna do whenever you actually get your points and you write them down, because now we're gonna actually go through and plot these things out, is draw a line down the center of all of them, okay? Draw a line down the center of all of them so that you can figure out what's gonna be your left and your right, your latitude and your longitude. And then the next thing you wanna do is underline the first two numbers of each set, okay? Now that you have your grid coordinates underlined where you're gonna figure out what grid square they're in, just to show you guys kind of where we're gonna be looking at right here, the starting point is 9906. So I always tell myself 9906. I don't even worry about the other points because that does not matter when you're trying to figure out what square you're in. So 9906, we're gonna go right. Okay, so moving to the right here, all right. Here is nine, nine. And then we're gonna look for zero, six. Now we want to move up until we have zero, six. And zero, six just happens to be this first point right here. So if it was zero, seven, then we would have moved up to here. But since zero, six is at the very bottom, we are gonna stay in the bottom here. And let me use a pencil. This grid coordinate right here where I'm faking drawn dashes through this is going to be the grid square that we're going to be in and now we can actually go and plot that point okay so the really important thing you want to keep in mind whenever again you are about to plot your point is pay attention to which triangle you are going to use before we establish that we're using a 1 to 25,000 scale map which is going to be this big one right here and when you're actually going to use this protractor and you're going to plot the point, you are going to line up the right side of the triangle on the left side of the grid square. So it's going to this line right here that I'm going to draw right there. This line, you're going to line that up with the right side of the protractor. And then you're going to line up the bottom of the grid square with the bottom of this triangle. Now, if you look over here, remember we're going right and then up. So this is whenever we're going to remember and use this eight zero, okay? So nine nine gave us the grid square. Eight zero is gonna tell us how far over we're going to move. So I'm gonna take the protractor and I'm going to move it over until this eight tick mark right here lines up on the grid coordinate line or the grid square line. So if you can see this line right here, let me zoom in for you guys. So again, let me repeat this. You're gonna line up the protractor on the left side of the grid square. This is the grid square. And then we're going to move it over until the eight right here is in line with the grid, the vertical line in the grid, okay? Once we've done that, up, right, and then up. This nine two right here is going to indicate how far we're going to go up. 
all right so you don't have to move the protractor you don't have to do anything the only thing you have to do is look at where nine two is now the nine is going to be indicated by these tick marks one two three four five six seven eight nine and then the two is indicated by the smaller tick marks now if you have a nine one or something basically you're just going to have to guesstimate that in between these two lines but with the nine two basically we're going to be here one two three four five six seven eight nine and then right under that where I've plotted this point before, obviously, because I've used this map before, is going to be this point right here. So a quick little recap. Our grid coordinate, or our grid square, is going to be 9906, which is going to be this grid square. We're going to then line up the protractor, move it over 80, because that is what the starting point is going to indicate. So we're going to move it over to 8. And then we're going to look up here at 9-2. And if I'm not lining this up, it's kind of difficult because I'm looking at an angle. But we're going to look up here at 9-2. And then what I usually like to do is drop my pen, my pencil and then move the projector out of the way. And then boom, we plot the point right there. All right, so now that we have our starting point down, which is right here. And what I like to do is I like to draw circles around them just so you can easily identify them a little bit better. And also, I like to use a pen whenever I'm doing this. Um, again, it's a little bit easier and it doesn't really rub off in the rain. But since we're inside and if I want to erase this, I can. I can use a pencil. But now that we have our starting point down, we know where we are and we can base ace, base everything else off of that. The next thing that you're going to want to do is plot your other points. Okay, so up here we can see that our first point is going to be 99400752. But since we drew a line down the middle, we only want to focus on these two numbers, which is going to tell us what grid square we are in. So if you look over here, 99, we're going to move to the right to 99. Same one we were before. And then we're going to move up to 07. So we're going to move up. And right here is 07. So this grid that I'm going to draw a circle is going to be the grid square that we're in. Which remember, it is the upper right grid square. So this one right here. So this grid square, because the point is here on the left, this is the grid square that we're going to be in. And now we're going to plot the 40 and the 52, which will tell us where the actual point is going to be. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you guys me plotting this point. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna line the triangle up on this vertical line. I'm gonna line it up and I'm also gonna line it across this horizontal line just to make sure it's correct. And we are gonna to have to move to the right for zero. So it's gonna be until the fourth tick lines up on this vertical line, okay? Now that we've done that, we don't have to move the protractor anymore. The only thing we have to do is look at where 5, 2 is going to be on here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to put my pencil right here because there's a little bit of a, a divot on the inside of the triangle where the line isn't actually at. So you don't want to draw to the left of that because you'll be off by a good bit. So I put my pencil right here. 5, 2, and I'm going to move the protractor out of the way, and boom. So I'm going to draw that, draw a circle around it, and then now we've plotted our first point. The other thing that I like to do is put a number next to it. So here I'm going to draw a 1, because this is going to be our first point on the list that they gave us, so I can keep track of that point, and that will come in handy later. Alrighty, so the next point that I have given myself is this 98550730. Okay, so again, we're going to look at these two points right here, 9807. We're going to ignore the other two because we don't need those right now. We only need 9807 so that we can identify which grid square we are in. So if you look over here, we're going to move to the right. There is 9, 6, 9, 7, 9, 8. So 9, 8 is where we're going to be at on the vertical axis. And then we're going to have to move up 
to zero seven. So we'll remember zero six is right here. We're gonna move up. So nine eight zero seven is going to converge right here, which means that our point is going to be in this grid square. Now don't worry about this whole yellow lines or anything like that. Basically all that is is this is the actual you know land nav portion of this map okay so this is where we're going to be and then obviously this area outside where the red and all that stuff is that's not going to be utilized so it's going to be somewhere in here so now i'm going to zoom in we're going to actually plot this five five three zero all right so here was our vertical line here is our horizontal line and i'm going to line up the triangle on the protractor based off of that this would be the third time we've done this now so i'm gonna go a little bit quicker all right, so now that once that's lined up, I know that I have to move to the right five, five. So let's move that over five and a half ticks. So there's the five. And now I need to move over just a little bit more to be in the center. I think that's about right. Again, I'm looking at this a little off centered, so it should be for the most part correct. Now, now that I've done that, we don't have to move the protractor again. All we have to do is move up whatever the point says and that's three zero so we're going to go over here to this third tick and i'm going to put my pencil down right there move the protractor out of the way boom all right so i got that now if you notice there is a hill right here so whenever i'm actually going to find this point it should be somewhere within 50 to 100 meters of this hilltop so if i'm not near any hill or anything like that that is something that is important. Now, there are some other things, terrain association stuff. We will cover that later in this video, but uh, with these roads and creeks and stuff like that. But for right now, just you know, keep in mind whenever you plot this point, oh, hey, it's near a hill. So whenever I actually do it, when I go find it, it's gonna be near a hilltop. And of course, since this is our second point, I want to draw a two near it. So starting point, I will draw an S over here. Let's see here, if I can draw this S that is visible. Again, I usually use a pen because, you know, it's a little bit easier to see whenever it's dark and all that stuff. Whenever you use a pencil and a red lens flashlight, it's a little bit harder to see. So try and use a pen whenever you're actually doing this out in the field. It will definitely come in handy. So here's our starting point. Here's our first point. Here's our second point. So now that we've got all the plots pointed, the next thing we're gonna to have to figure out how to do is figure out what kind of route we're gonna take, how far is it in between these points, what kind of azimuth are we going to be uh, walking at, and so that's gonna be the next part in this video. All right, so finding the azimuth, which is basically the degrees that you're going to walk whenever you're using your compass. So this compass right here has got degrees on it, up to 360 degrees, you guys should know that. All an azimuth is, is whenever you're at this starting point, at what degree or azimuth should you actually walk in order to get to this point? And to find that out, you are going to use this little handy tool called a protractor. And let me see if I can get this to focus, but there is a hole right here where my, middle, my pointer finger is. There is a hole right at the center of this thing. And how you're gonna figure out the degrees is around this protractor, there's all these different numbers. And so the very outside ones, those are mills. You do not have to worry about mills unless you are gonna be an artillery guy. And again, you don't even have to worry about that until you actually get to your AIT. So the thing we're going to be focusing on is these inside numbers right here, which are degrees. So it'll start from zero, go all the way around to 355, and then zero is also 360 degrees, as you guys know. So we're gonna use that. And what you wanna do is you wanna line up this center point right here on top of the starting point. Now, before I go any further, the little trick that you guys are going to want to know, and I highly recommend you guys do this, is get a piece of string, otherwise known as 550 cord, which you're gonna have in the military. Hopefully, they should pass them out to you guys. If you don't have any, then ask your drill sergeant whenever you're there 
or you know if you're watching this for some other purposes and want to learn lane nav then just get some kind of small string and feed it through the center hole of this and then I will show you guys how to use that in just a second alrighty so I have my string on the protractor basically this is the string that's inside of a 550 cord and you basically just tie a knot in it and um, you know so you can use it basically to find your degrees and the way you're gonna find this out or the way you're gonna use this actually is whenever you place a protractor on the point you're going to then use the string to see where the angles are gonna be at right so this is how you're going to use this now the other thing I want to talk about before or before I get this uh, to this next step this is why I have this notebook here this is a, a all-weather notebook that you guys should all probably pick up um, you know you can write on it and you know if it gets a little bit wet it's not going to be as you know screwed up as other you know regular paper so I definitely recommend this and the reason you need a piece of paper is because you're gonna have to write all this stuff down and I'm gonna walk you guys through my step-by-step -step process on how I do this whole land nav thing um, because I think it's pretty efficient and you know it's really nice to write things down so you don't have to obviously remember it so what we're going to do now is we're gonna line this up and I'm gonna write down the information on this notebook Before we actually get into actually figuring out which points we're going to be going to, the first thing you, that you want to figure out is what route are you going to take. Now that we've plotted all of our points, we want to figure out from the starting point, which point are we going to get first, which point are we going to get second, and from that we're going to figure out which route we're going to go in. So, you know, do you want to go to point number two first, the farther point, and then come back and get one, and then go back to the start, which is also the ending point. Or do you want to go to the first point, which is closer, and then the second point that's farther away, and then come back? Um, you you will have your own, you know, personal preferences on things, but I do recommend getting the easier points first. Now, if there is a point that's like going to be extremely, extremely easy, then yeah, you could probably skip that one and kind of get that as your your bank shot one at the end. Um, but in this case, both of them are a pretty good distance away. And I don't recommend going to a point like number two that is this far away from the starting point because that's a pretty big distance where you can kind of deviate a little bit. So if you get to this first point, then once you're here, you actually know where you're at. And then you have a shorter distance to go. But if you try to go to point number two right off from the get-go, you might get lost and then you're kind of just stuck. Like then you don't know where you're at so you can't go get point number one so you're again you're kind of just stuck but if you get point number one first and then get point number two once you get this point you know where you're at and then you can go from there but again if you go for the hard point and you end up not getting it you could get lost and it'll cost you a whole bunch of time all right so the order that we're going to take is we're going to go from this starting point to the first point from the first point to the second point and then from the second point back to the finish so we're going to go here 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 and back to the finish line now the first thing that you're going to want to figure out is at what azimuth are you actually going to be doing this so real quick the the reason i wrote this down right here like this is because you're going to have to figure out your azimuth and then your distance and the way i like to do things is i'll figure out my azimuth and the distance and i'll write it down under here and then whenever you actually go to do your points, then you can kind of just look at this sheet of paper and then you can figure out, okay, I need to go from this as, I need to use this azimuth to go this far and I'll get to my first point. Same thing with here and here and you don't have to replot or redo anything. All right, so lining up the center right here of the protractor on the starting point, which is right here. And I'm gonna hold that down and then get this string and right here is the first point right there. And you're gonna use this string and line it up to right above that point. And then, let me see if I can do this. Right here where my pointer finger is, you're gonna actually look at the degrees and where that's going to be. And it looks somewhere around, I don't know, 326, 327, let's say 328 degrees. And I found that out by looking where this 
string goes across the line right here. So let's say about 328 degrees. So over here, am I going to write 300, that's terrible, 328 degrees? Is this correct? No, it's actually not correct. So let's do this real quick. You got to remember this thing right here, the GM angle. And whenever you're looking down here to figure out which one you're going to convert, you're going to, you're going to have to add or subtract that 10.3 degrees to 328 degrees. So which one are we going to do? So right now we are figuring out the grid azimuth because we're using the protractor on the grid. So this right here says to convert a magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth, we need to subtract the GM angle. That is not what we want because we're not going from magnetic to grid. What we're wanting to do is go from grid to, let me see here, magnetic. This is magnetic, this is grid, okay? So we're gonna figure out what we need to use for the compass. So we're gonna look at this one. To convert a grid azimuth to a mag magnetic azimuth, we need to add, keyword here being add. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, let's move this over a little bit more, 328 degrees plus 10.3 degrees, let's just round it off at 10 degrees. Um, another thing I'd like to add is the GM angle does change no matter, or like wherever you're at on the world, like it'll be, a, you know, different maps will have different GM angles, so your GM angle will change. So let's just add 10 degrees, and we're gonna get 338 degrees, all right? So this is our azimuth. That's all it is. That is all an azimuth is. It is basically degrees. And so what's gonna happen is whenever you have this compass, this black line right here, you're going to want to line that up to 338 degrees, which is right here. It's kind of hard because I'm looking at the camera doing this. But you're going to line this black line up and you're going to walk in this direction, that way. Okay, so that's how you're going to use the compass with the degrees, okay? All right, so now our next point that we're going to be getting is our second point. So now that we figured out where we need to go to get to the first point, now we need to figure out where do we need to go and what azimuth do we need to walk at to get to the second point. So in order to do that, we're going to line up the center of the protractor on the first point. And remember that all this should be, you know, horizontal and parallel to the grid. All right, so now I'm gonna get this string and right here is my point. Let me, let me lift this up so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, there it is. So there's the point. I'm gonna get the string right here. And that's somewhere, let's say that's, let's just say that's 256 degrees. Yeah, 256 degrees is the azimuth that we're gonna be walking there. So I'm gonna write that down right now. 256 degrees, but, ooh, that's not a six. 256 degrees. But remember, this isn't what we're actually gonna be walking at. We need to add 10 degrees to get 266 degrees. And this is what we're actually gonna be paying attention to because remember, we are converting from a grid azimuth to our magnetic azimuth. And finally, we are gonna figure out uh, the azimuth that we need to go to get back from the second point all the way back to the starting point or now it's the finish, finish line. So we will put our protractor on the center of this. We'll use this string to line it up at that point right there and that is around 106 looks like about 106 degrees okay so 106 and generally i will actually write it out like this 
just to ensure that I actually added the 10 degrees because sometimes if you just write down this number you might not really remember like did I actually add the 10 degrees and whatnot so you kind of for me I like to write it down so I don't forget so 116 degrees for our grid and our walking and what we're gonna do from the starting point to the first point so from here to here we're gonna walk at 338 degrees from the first point to the second point we're gonna walk at 266 degrees and from the second point to the finish we're gonna walk at 116 degrees and now the next step is we need to figure out how far of a distance are these points away from each other All right, so to find the distance in between all these points, there's two different methods that you can use. One of the methods is you can use the ticks on the protractor and line them up like this and you can figure it out that way. That is a method people can use, but personally, I don't really like doing it that much because I don't know, personal preference, I guess. But what you can do is line up the kind of center axis right here and then look at the distance. So that should be somewhere around 700 meters or so from the starting point to the first point. What I like to do is basically get a piece of paper, rip it, and then I'm gonna use this piece of paper to actually draw tick marks for a distance. And then we're gonna use this, um, you know, distance, what, what do you call this thing? I'm not exactly sure what you call this, but basically this is how you're gonna find your distance right here. And I'm gonna draw tick marks on the piece of paper to figure out the distance. Okay, so from point, from the starting point to the first point, I'm gonna do this right here. I'm going to draw, I'm gonna line them up just like this to where the actual points are right on the edge. And I'm gonna do a tick mark right here and then what I like to do is do a start to the first point the next thing I'm gonna do is over here from the first point to the second point I'm gonna line it up again should be right about there and I'm gonna draw another tick mark and so this is the first point to the second point that's a terrible two but whatever and finally what we're gonna have to do last is go from the second point back to the start and that's a pretty big distance right there that should be about right do a tick right there and so this is the second point to the start all right so now you can see these tick marks. So from this distance right here is the starting point to the first point. This distance right here between these two tick marks is the first point to the second point. And this tick to this tick is the second point to the starting point. Now the way you're gonna figure this out, the distance is by using this little distance tracker thing right there. I can't believe I forgot what this is called, but you know, you guys understand what I'm about to show you guys. And I just noticed that this map has basically a, a really terrible, you know, separation right here. But basically, this goes up to one kilometer. So from zero to one kilometer. And then it's doing 0 0.125, 0 0.25, a half of a kilometer, 0.75 kilometers, and one kilometer. So these are all jumbled together. That's what I was saying is really confusing. But what you want to do is line up these tick marks and try to get the distance. So it just kind of so happened that from zero to 0.75 kilometers is going to be this right here. So 0.75 kilometers is 750 meters and that's how you're gonna be doing your distance. So I'm going to write 750 meters. And I just dropped a notebook, but it's okay. We're gonna keep on moving on. Now we're gonna look at from the first point to the second point. And what I'm going to do here, since this doesn't actually reach the end, I'm gonna line it up to the next closest point. So 0.75 to zero. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another tick mark here at the zero mark. And then, so this point right here, this distance is going to be that 750 meters. And I really, really hope you guys can see that. But now we need to figure out these two points. So this tick to this tick. And so what I'm gonna do now is line those up from zero to around here, right here is 0.25 and it's a little bit farther than 0.125. So basically this is where you're gonna have to put a little bit of a guess into it. So what I'm gonna say is this is, let's just go with 200 meters, all right? So we're just gonna say 200 meters is gonna be this distance right here. So 200 meters. So we're gonna have to add this 200 meters to this 750 meters, and that is going to be 950 meters, which is quite a trek. The next part we're gonna have to go over is the second point to the uh, starting point. Now this is going to be longer than a kilometer, and there are some maps that will have uh, kind of like an extended scale over here where you can line up the big number, so the kilometer, and this will actually kind of go a little bit farther. Some maps have that, but this one's uh, that I just happen to have do not. But again, I wouldn't really worry about that. You can use a little bit of common sense and kind of do what I'm doing right now, which is lining it up at the with the biggest measurement. So one kilometer, I'm lining up this tick mark, and I'm gonna draw a line at the zero. So this distance right here is going to be 1,000 meters or one kilometer. And now I'm going to line up this. Okay, so starting at the zero to here, right here is gonna be 0.25 or 250 meters. I'm gonna move it a little bit farther and we're gonna to have to guesstimate a little bit on this one as well. And we're gonna say it's gonna be 300 meters. So this distance in between here is 300 meters, all right? So 300 meters plus 1,000 meters is 1,300 meters or 1.3 kilometers. It's a little bit easier to do that because you know you don't want to be saying 0.95 kilometers, you know, whatever. You're going to be keeping track of your footsteps in meters. So that is 1,300 meters, not 1 1.3 kilometers for the, our sake right now. So what are we going to do next? Uh, we're going to write down the distance on our sheet right here so that this can be a one look stop on where we're going to go. So from the starting point to the first point is 750 meters. So I'm gonna write that down. God, I'm terrible at writing guys. I think, it, I think it's the video camera, but 750 meters is gonna be the start point to the first point. Now, from the first point to the second point is 950 meters. So 950 meters and then from the let me rotate this the second point to the starting point is 1300 meters which is quite a trek all right so this is going to be the straight line distance between all of these different points and the cool thing about this is you don't actually have to plot the points so one of the mistakes or i wouldn't really call it a mistake but one of the things that a lot of other people will do is they will get their first point and they'll go to the starting point and then they'll pull out their map and their compass and their protractor and their paper and then they'll try and plot the second point once they get to their first point and then once they get to their second point they're going to pull out their map and their compass and their protractor it could be raining at this point it could be really dark at this point and then they're going to try and plot this right here the cool thing about this is you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to do any of that hassle or anything whenever you're actually doing the land nav course. All you have to do is have this piece of paper and you know that from your starting point to your first point, you need to walk at this azimuth and you need to go this far. Once you get to that first point, you don't have to do any other calculations. You just need to know that you need to walk at this azimuth and you need to go this far. And then once you get to your second point to go back to the finish, you need to walk at this azimuth and go this 
far. And again, this is a straight line distance. There is something I'm gonna talk about really quick, which is called terrain association. All right, so terrain association. What in the heck is terrain association? So what we're doing here is basically dead reckoning, which is walking in a straight line distance, no matter what is over here, whether you're crossing a creek, or you're going over a hill or whatever, this is going to be the straight line distance to get to your points. What terrain association is, is if you notice, there's these little dotted lines right here. If you notice all these hills, if you notice the little creeks and stuff like that, there's a creek right here. You can kind of base your distance and direction off of that. I, I'm telling you guys right now, I do not recommend this because maps, more often than not, are not that accurate, okay? So, if you see this, this trail right here, and you see our first point right here, I might recommend it for this first point, but not for the second one. But what I mean is, terrain association is if you were to just walk in this direction, and you could get your protractor out and kind of calculate where this is gonna be, but you know, if north is zero degrees, over to your right is 90 degrees, then over directly to your left, is 270 degrees. So if you were to walk around about 280 degrees or so, eventually you will come across this trail. Now once you get to this trail, if you walk over to the right of the trail, so if you walk right, you're gonna come, uh, you're gonna walk across here, and you may or may not be able to see this, but there is a little creek right here. So you'll know when you're getting close to this first point, because when you're walking to the right, there's gonna be a creek. So once you get to that creek, you're gonna be like, okay, I'm walking in the right direction. And there's gonna be a crossroads right here, okay? So a terrain association is pretty much what it says. You are looking at the terrain, you're looking at the map, you're looking at the roads, the hills and all that stuff, the creeks, the rivers, and you are kind of associating where your point is at in relation to that. So you can follow this road, you can come over here, and you'll know that your first point is going to be really close to the road. You could probably even see it from the road or, or from this trail. I mean, it's not an actual hardball road, but this is going to be a trail. So that is terrain association. If you wanted to do terrain association for the second point, what you would do is you would just kind of follow this, tra this trail right here. And since it's not right off of a road, what people will like to do is when they get to this intersection, they will draw a point right here, and then they will use this distance to try and figure out where this point is, rather than coming from over here. Again, the only negative part about that is this is pretty close, okay? This is pretty close, and you could probably use the terrain association here, but in a lot of cases, this intersection might not even be there it might be way off to the side. So this map may not be accurate. And when you shoot your azimuth to try to figure out where you're going, instead of thinking you're going from here to here, you could be going off in some other crazy direction and you could get lost. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind with terrain association. Um, you can figure out a distance and direction. So what you could do is you could put a point right here on this intersection and then from this intersection point to your second point, you could go through this process and figure that out. But it's a little bit more sketchier doing it that way. It is okay to combine the two a little bit, um, but you know, just keep in mind, terrain association is kind of iffy uh, because maps are not always accurate. But whenever you guys go to basic training, the, the distances shouldn't be too bad. So like from this starting point to this first point, that's about as far as you're gonna go. I would not expect at basic training to have a distance this far away, but you know, you never know. Also, you're gonna have a whole bunch of points, so you could have like six other points, and you know, your your sixth point will be really close to your second point, and you could have another point like right here, so you will not have a at this far of a distance from your final point to the starting point. So something to keep in mind whenever you're about to, you know, try this, test this out or whatever. 
Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about actually walking to your points and finding your point. So if you're looking for your first point and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get there, what you guys are going to quickly figure out is there's this thing called a pace count. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to walk 100 meters and you're going to figure out how many steps did you take. So if you, and not individual steps, steps with one foot. So if you start off with your left foot when you walk and then you take a step with your right foot, you're not going to count that step. You will count every left foot step that you take. And you will count that up until you get to 100 meters. And for me, it's usually around 72 or 73 paces or steps. So every time you're walking, you want to count how many steps you're going to take. Once you get to, for my, for my example, 73 steps, I will draw a tick mark, right? And you couldn't see that. I will draw a tick mark and then that indicates I'm at 100 meters. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my count over and I will go to 200 meters. Once I get another 73 paces or steps i will do another tick mark the reason you're going to do this is so you can keep track of your steps and you can keep track of your distance so we're going to go 300 meters 400 meters 500 meters 600 meters 700 meters so we're going to our first point which is 750 meters away i am now 700 meters away once you get to within 50 to 100 meters of your first point you want to actually start looking out for that point so you don't really have to worry about looking for the point when you're at 500 meters and before because you're going to be somewhere around here and you're not going to be anywhere close to that first point and seeing it but within whenever you get within 50 to 100 meters you're going to be pretty close to that first point and you want to keep and you know an eye out you want to keep your head on a swivel looking around trying to find that first point because odds are you can kind of see it from a little bit of a distance away just depending on the terrain and how thick the vegetation is so keep that in mind that is how you're going to keep track of your distance you're going to have a pace count which you're going to figure out uh, right before you go and you do the land nav course and when you're actually on the land nav course you need to keep track of how many paces you're doing there's other these there's these other things called beads which I'm not gonna worry about, but uh, I still like to use this because the beads sometimes can get messed up. But again, tick marks, keep track of your paces. So let's say you are going to your first point and you can't find it. You've walked 700 meters, you've walked you know, 800 meters, 900 meters, I hope you don't go that far. But you've gotten to that point and you're not really sure where it's at. What you can do, when you think you're around 750 meters and the point should be somewhere around you, what you can do is you can mark a location. So you can, if you have a PT belt or something, you can mark a big tree and you can go out and do different search methods, okay? So something that you can do is walk 50 meters uh, at a 90 degree azimuth, then you can walk 50 meters at a zero or 360 degree azimuth and you can make a box okay so then you can go uh, at an azimuth of 270 meters and there's then that's called the box method so you'll you'll get to your point and you'll shoot azimuths and walk in a box and then you should come back to where you started there's another method called the t uh, the t method and that's basically very similar you walk in one direction then you turn around and you walk in the other direction. And it's basically a search method so that you mark your location of where you're at so you don't get all jacked up and messed up. And then you kind of do a little search in a small area to figure out where that point's at. And hopefully you should actually find the point when you do your little search. So for a little recap, I drew this up for you guys. Basically, I separated everything out into major categories that we talked about. The first thing is map reading. So you want to keep in mind that when you're looking at the map, you want to pay attention to the scale, the GM angle, and whether or not you're converting from grid to magnetic or magnetic to grid. Then you want to look at the contour intervals, which is basically all those little squiggly lines and the distance in between them, which you can see over here. Uh, so what's the elevation difference going to be? And then the only real thing is that you have to pay attention to as far as colors is black and blue. So you want to pay attention to the contour interval lines 
and you want to pay attention to the blue which is obviously water but the main thing is the creeks and stuff and that will help you kind of figure out whether or not you're in the right direction so if you know you're over here from the starting point to the first point and you're supposed to cross this creek right here when you cross that creek you know you're somewhere over here and it kind of helps you figure out where you're at a little bit so that's why i like creeks the terrain features right so this is really important but the valley or not the um the valley the hill is the most important thing right um i wrote right here as a note a valley is usually near a stream so you know these little streams and, and creeks and stuff over here they're going to be low areas so they're going to be basically in between different high points and that's something to keep in mind um, but again hill is really 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 important ridges and saddles and draws and spurs and cliffs and all that stuff uh they're they're not as important but you know if you know the contour lines and, and what basically makes up a hill so you have you know a circle inside another circle inside another circle you know you can have all these other things around it but you know that this is a hill and so right here i wrote down that for plotting you're going to in 99 times out of well, let's just say nine times out of ten because i've used the 10 digit grid coordinate before but you're going to use an eight digit grid coordinate which is gonna get you within 10 meters of the actual point. Um, and right here, I, I wrote that you should make sure that the map and compass are oriented correctly. Um, that's honestly not that big of a deal, so ignore that. I mean, it's a big deal, but you know, if you're, if you're walking in the right direction that you wrote down right here, if you're in the right direction on the compass with what you wrote down, you're gonna be good to go. It doesn't really matter which way the, the map is facing. And when you're plotting your points, I drew this over here, when you're plotting the points, you want to go right and then up. You want to remember that right, up, right, up. And whenever you have these two lot, these this four-digit grid coordinate right here, you can draw a line down the center, and you know the left is going to go right, and then this right part over here is going to go up. So zero two is going to go right, and then eight one is going to go up. So zero two, eight one, and you're going to be in this grid square. Now you wanna make sure you look at the scale. You wanna use the protractor and remember to go right up and then you'll draw your point. Before you actually draw uh, or get your azimuths and figure out all that stuff and the distances, you want to figure out your route. I wrote that real bold right here. You want to figure out your route after you draw all of your points. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is draw all of your points down. You're gonna plot them all and then you're gonna look at it and you're gonna figure out what route you're gonna take that's gonna be best for you. So if you're given eight grid coordinates, but you only need to get five of them, which five points are you gonna go for and try to get um, and then come back? So you don't wanna plan a route for all of them uh, if you don't have the time. So keep that in mind, figure out your route. Once you figure out your route, you're gonna find your azimuths, which we did that before, which use the protractor and this string right here to figure out your azimuths and then you want to add the gm angle to your azimuth now we're in most cases you're going to be going from a grid to a magnetic right remember grid magnetic okay this is a magnetic azimuth and in that case you want to add the gm angle if you're trying to figure out something like if you're looking with the compass and you're trying to line up like a big building or something and then you're going to go from this to try to figure out where the building is at on the map, that is gonna be going from magnetic to grid. So that's when you would subtract, but in all of y'all's cases, you should just be adding it. Um, and again, right here I have use a paper to get the distance. That is what we did right here. And then combine all of them on one cheat sheet, which is this. So you're gonna combine all the information you have on one cheat sheet, so you only have to look at this piece of paper. So you don't want to lose this. So something real quick I didn't talk about in the actual video. Dead Reckoning versus Terrain Association. I kind of talked about that a little bit. Dead Reckoning is just walking in a straight line. Terrain Association is kind of looking at the train and figuring out where you're going to go. But with Dead Reckoning, a really common thing to do is just to pick a tree. Now, pardon my terrible handwriting, but pick a tree. And what that means is you're going to use your compass and you're going to line it up and you're, whenever you have the compass pointed in the right direction, you're gonna look up and you're going to pick a tree that is in the same direction at the same azimuth 
that you're wanting to walk. And then all you're gonna do is walk to that tree. Once you get to that tree, then you're gonna go, you're gonna shoot your azimuth again, you're gonna pick another tree, and you're gonna walk to that tree. And once you get to that tree, you're gonna repeat the process over and over and over again so that you know, you're basically walking in as straight of line as possible. And if you deviate a little bit to the left or the right, it doesn't matter. As long as you end up at that tree, you're going to be on the right track. And as always, as you're walking along, you want to write on your paper every time a tick, every time you get 100 meters. And then whenever you get around about 50 meters, you want to start looking around. And if you can't find it, you want to use the box method and the T method to actually look for the point all right so that's it if you made it this far please hit that like button please hit that like button because i put honestly a lot of work and time into this and explaining it i'm not a teacher i'm not anything like that so you know take you know my inability to teach with a you know a grain of salt but i hope you got something from this especially if you made it to the end of the video um, but yeah hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed already if you do have any questions leave your comments down below if you want to ask me something on Instagram or Snapchat, links are also in the description, and I will see you guys later. Drop.